40 and $50,000 a month. We almost thought about quitting the business at that point. It was getting so hard. Our first year was $110,000, 12, 16 hour days. My name is Abraham Trevino. Me and my brother, Matt Trevino, own Bombas Barbecue and Food Truck here in Kalamazoo, Michigan. How we got started was basically my brother, Matt, he got us into a, uh, into a rib fest event. It was a one day vendor for local guys and uh, he signed us up for it. We pretty much pooled our money together to buy food for it. And uh, we actually won the Rip Fest contest that year out of, so that kind of started the business. We didn't actually have a business at that point yet. Over the next year, we uh, started building a small food truck and we started setting that little food truck up in front of a liquor store at uh, Eastwood Market is what it was called. And we were set up in front of the liquor store selling barbecue and tacos. We kind of had our own style of menu with the barbecue. We were doing like a sort of a taco, and barbecue theme and Mexican food, sort of different. So it was kind of different from what was going on in this area. What made you get into wanting to sell food? My brother was a really good chef. He uh, he ran some restaurants and uh, he was good at cooking and he, we were winning these competitions. We were just getting offers to do events. You know, we were getting recruited by some people to do different events, so. And then I just realized that there was really a market for it, you know, kind of to start a business. We always kind of wanted to start a business and uh, that that's kind of how it started. Do you remember what it costed to get like your first truck? Oh, well, that's, it's a funny story because we had got a $2,000 loan to buy the truck, bought the truck and it kind of like sat as we would, we were both working jobs. So we would put away money and put pieces together and that we needed to get through the health department. You know, we looked up the health department codes for food trucks. And the other thing that started up the idea of a food truck, Kalamazoo was passing a new ordinance to allow food trucks to operate in the city. And, you know, that was kind of like, you know, what kind of sparked the idea to do that. So we just bit by bit, you know, put money into that food truck and we got out and we were fairly popular with, with just a little white Food truck. So from back then to now, how has your business evolved or changed? It's grown every year since the beginning. The truck that we originally had was a $2,000 truck and it was just, it wasn't in the greatest shape. So as soon as we got a little bit of money started rolling in, we invested in another truck. But by the end of that first summer, a brewery had just opened up in Lawton, Michigan, and they had a kitchen available, commercial kitchen available, and they really liked our food. The owners of it really liked what we were doing. And they offered us a deal to start up with pretty low rent. And we decided to go with it and serve food for the brewery. And that lasted four years. Some people have broken into it and kind of trashed it. And we just, we didn't need it. So we just haven't been uh, using it. That was the old, the original one is the black one. And our guy who does mechanic work for us had the bright idea to use parts off of it. And we needed to actually junk it now, but he was trying to use parts off this to put into here to get this one fixed because okay. this one was kind of really run down. So that's why it's kind of taken apart right now. He was using parts to patch this one together and it just never kind of still has issues. This was the $2,000 one we bought originally. Okay. And it's kind of almost like I'm ready to junk it, but I kind of don't want to get rid of it. Just, but like eventually, mind. yeah, eventually it was, it worked, you know, it got us our start. And, uh, this was actually the brewery. It's still on there that we started out working at. It, it winded up closing, but, uh, that was the original brewery we were out at. And then, yeah, that one, this is the regular food truck that we had. We, and the cool thing about this one, outside of the wrap, we built the kitchen on the inside. Me and my brother did. So that one we did not build. These first two, we built the insides of them in our spare time. I used to work as a technician at a uh, machine company. And so I had a lot of the mechanical knowledge that we needed to get going in the beginning. So, and my brother had the food, so it kind of worked out well that way. What do you think you made in your first like one or two years? In our first year, I know for a f one of our first years, our, we, uh, we have a really good accountant, by the way, that started helping us out in the beginning. Her name is Brenda Shearburn, and she just helped us out so much early days and figuring out numbers. And I, for, I believe our first year was $110,000 is what we made. You've grown a lot. Yeah, we have grown a lot. It's every year it's growing and just not giving up is a big part of it. That's what I would say, because if you do, you know, if we would have gave up years ago when we almost did, you know, we wouldn't be out. So it can turn around quickly in business. And that's what people have to realize. Like things can turn around so quickly in business. They can go from all the way bad to all the way good in like a couple of weeks. So 
I mean, stick with it if you really want to do it. Right now, we're doing between um, forty and fifty thousand dollars a month. I mean, that's just a you know, some months are a little bit slower than that, but we've been pretty consistent on that this year at this building and at operating the food truck. Yeah, so it's it's going pretty good. We're able to give ourselves a good. Uh, we're able to pay ourselves. And in the early days of business, that's one thing that it's hard to pay yourself. Sometimes you got to pay bills, you got to pay people to help you and you got to buy food. And early days, you might not get a paycheck every week. It's one thing they got to look out for if you're starting a business, like you have to be able to not take paychecks here and there. I saw you guys have a trailer. When did that come about? The trailer was bought over this past winter time and it was just, we had found a deal on it and we were looking to get something that we could do more production out of because our other food truck, it was more of like, there we couldn't do a lot of cooking in it as far as like the equipment that was in there so that trailer when we found that it was already built full commercial kitchen full smoker in the back it had everything we needed to operate like a restaurant like a full restaurant on wheels when we knew we had a lot of good events covid was coming to an end we'd be out to be, be able to do more public events and stuff like that so this thing about the trailer probably this back end here it's a smoker it's a rotating southern pride you can cook a large amounts of food on this thing it's like almost brand new it came with the trailer everybody in uh, the barbecue business knows about these southern prides they're like top of the line some people say they're like the rolls royce of smoker i've heard uh probably gordon ramsay say that but uh yeah so this thing's phenomenal it's going to help us out big time to do because you know you it's hard to smoke on site but this thing's gonna make our jobs easy can i ask how much it costs probably about 30 to forty thousand dollars depending on how much we have also another one inside the restaurant that's pretty much just like this so we have two of these and that's a huge investment but it makes our jobs easy we, we we've learned to you know it smoke they work very very well and they make our jobs easier so and then the food truck inside of the food truck might have a I might have to move this sign out because we did an event the other day and this if you wanted to just get a shot of this menu real quick you can see like what we are doing this is just like last friday we were out uh doing a different event with just that's kind of the menu thing and then this is the trailer a couple of things probably straightened up a little bit but yep we got the prep cooler right here a freezer a fryer we got a char grill right here that flat top it's all suppression hood for that's a new state law that uh food trucks have to have this suppression hood if you're going to be cooking just required for all the events that we do does it get hot in here it does but this vent hood works really well and it pulls a lot of the heat out we also have ac in this one so our other ones we knew how hot it got in our trailers and stuff so i mean it does help a little bit it's not perfect because it's so it gets hot in here and uh just with the vent hood sucking the heat out and this thing running it does make it a little more comfortable and that's kind of why the upgrade to this trailer was something that we really wanted to do we just wanted everything to be easier and this trailer makes it quite a bit easier can you talk about some of your like day-to-day -day operations from when you first started to now they've changed quite a bit because at first when we started the business i wasn't working here full time i was working another job and doing this kind of on the side and my brother was working full time here and uh just bit by bit we became so bu too busy to where i couldn't keep a job there so that's one of the things that changed i had to uh, jump into the business full time. The bigger volume, we 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 when we moved out of the brewery, we had a little small restaurant, and it was just too small to do caterings, food truck events, and run it as a drive-through restaurant is what we were doing out in Lawton. And it just we needed more space, we needed to do more production, and that's kind of why this building here came along. You may have said this earlier, but because you have the food truck and you have this food trailer. Are you operating them at the same time? No, well, we haven't been in only because the truck right now, it has some mechanical problems. And so we don't, we haven't been operating that one. Eventually we will have both of them operating because uh, this year we have had multiple events on the day. What we have is we have some really nice canopies that we had to set up at an event this year because the other truck wasn't running. But that was a big deal with that other truck. And that was a real issue for us getting to different parts of the state is the mechanical issues we've had with our truck. It's had so many mechanical issues. It's been a headache for, so we've had to stick to Southwest Michigan because we were kind of afraid of it breaking down for a while there. It has, 
a new transmission and ant motor in it and it's still giving us headache Do you know how much you spent on repairs on it? it i would have to look it up but it's a lot it's a, it seems like every year we are putting i know that the motor was four thousand dollars somewhere around four thousand and the transmission was like 2500 that right off the bat that doesn't include that we already bought the truck before that so would you recommend getting a trailer over a truck not if you have a good mechanically sound truck tra uh food truck because the thing is with the trailer there is more setup to it you have to unhitch it from the back of our f-350 that we have and you have to set it up balance it out and uh sometimes and then also you can get stuck at events if you can't get your truck in to pull it out you know if there's more trucks loaded near you you might not be able to get in to get your trailer out so the truck sometimes it was easier i could just pull off at the end of event i could just pull out so that was kind of a cool thing about the food truck were you doing events or were you doing catering or our idea was really just to start up on the weekends we were both going to work our regular jobs and then we were going to kind of do events and festivals on the weekends and what happened is we just kind of started it started snowballing a little bit because we started getting busier and busier every time we were out we just kind of by the end of the summer my brother had left his job at the restaurant and he just kind of jumped right in and ran the food truck every week. What was one of your biggest events? Oh, the Rib Fest in Kalamazoo is always the biggest fest that we've done. And then for the food trucks, what do you guys do for your advertising? Well, the Rib Fest was one of the things that we started out when back in those days, 2013 or 14, what it was, if you won the competition, you got a spot, you earned a spot for the next year. And that's how they used to do it. So we had actually, by winning Rib Fest, we earned a spot for the next year. And uh, we started doing it there, you know, and that, that Thing. They said at one time 30,000 people came to downtown Kalamazoo, but I think they've changed that over the years. It's more like 15,000 people come to downtown Kalamazoo for that. But it's a big event. It's big time. It's just three days of nonstop cooking, nonstop work, 12, 16 hour days. That's how those festivals like that go. They're just extreme. And uh, with the new trailer, it, it actually makes festivals easier because we have a smoker on the back of the trailer that we can smoke on site. We just won these three this year, so that's kind of a cool thing that we did this year. The gumbo cook-off, the mac and cheese, and uh, best pulled pork at a event, two different events, but it's kind of it. And then our other theme of the restaurant is like, we've learned stuff by reading books. So, I mean, we have all kinds of different books by all kinds of different peoples for people to check out you know, cookbooks and just business books. And, you know, that's kind of our theme. That's how we learn just by different books. What made you get into like, the books? My brother, he was like, he literally was like, learned how to cook by studying books. And he learned methods, he learned different uh, things by, you know, studying books. At a, and, and I actually took a couple business courses early on, you know, at the community college. And, uh, you know, I learned enough a year of business to be able to operate and, you know, stay within the guidelines of what we need to do to operate. What's the furthest that you've gone for an event? We've gone, to, we, we go to Grand Rapids every now and then. Um, as far as events, I, we kind of, over the few, past few years, we've kind of stayed like locally Southwest Michigan and, you know, up to Grand Rapids, probably as far as we've gone. Can you talk about, you said the Red Fest is one of your biggest events, like how much you may have done in one of them. 15 to 20 thousand dollars is in, in one weekend, it, it, two to three day event. Yeah, it's extreme. It, it's like, this is my brother, Matt, too. He's co-owner of the business here. Yeah, so it's pretty cool to watch us grow too from just, you know, borrowed equipment you know to having a building and a couple of trucks and yeah, because that's why sometimes I, you know, I can think of certain stuff that I see the business as and Matt sees the business in a different way. And that's what makes us a good team, because I think just the way that we look at the business is different. We have different perspectives on how we run the business and operate. And uh, it when we come together, we do pretty good work. What's your favorite like dish to make? We're known for the ribs. I think that people already have figured out that we have some of the best ribs in probably the whole state of Michigan, if not further than that, because like people have known that and for years and that, that's how you know we got our start doing the rib fest but i think that you know just being able to do like the mexican cuisine also along with the barbecue it is sort of uh sets us apart from just the regular restaurants around the area yeah and then just our yeah, our tacos our quesadillas are popular too because we use our smoked meats and that so are we sell enough tacos here to where it's 
pretty ridiculous, you know, sometimes. Uh, in ribs sell every day and our rib tips are popular, our brisket, you know, pretty much everything on our menu. It's a small menu, but everything usually sells about, you know, the same. What are some of the expenses that come with owning food trucks in the restaurant? There's a lot of expenses. I mean, it's not, you know, operating cost, the, you know, the gas, propane, oil, I mean, for the fryer actually, so for the truck and for the fryer probably, for the vehicle maintenance, uh, food truck maintenance, restaurant maintenance, and then just the cost to operate, food uh, food cost and labor. We have about, probably about six employees right now. So, you know, just, yeah, and there's just a lot of operating things. insurance there. on those vehicles, and then each event, there's costs involved in that too. Like, for example, like Rib Fest, that one is between 1200 to two thousand dollars for the two-day event but you can you know make a good amount of money doing it so but some a lot of the other specials they're small like we did one and it was like a two hundred dollar fee and we ended up doing like eight or ten thousand dollars at that event so that one was pretty good but yeah there's a lot of different fees in it and knowing the amount of food to cook is yeah. just something that's taken years to figure out because you never sometimes you don't know if an event is going to be really really busy or really really slow and sometimes you're at the will of just whether the event's going to be good you know and then most of the time when we show up now we do very well because people know about us but i mean in the early days we just didn't know how much food to make so a lot of food trucks can get tied up into that and then you wind up having to throw the food away maybe because it's been out you've cooked it for eight hours or so and you have time limits on how long you can keep something so you guys do events you do catering is there anything else events catering and then this restaurant is just like you know this is our daily our daily thing here is the restaurant and then uh food truck events we work with factories around the area we work with uh you know um all kinds of different it's cool because there's so many different uh places that we've had the opportunity to work with wmu football was having us out there a lot we were actually during COVID. it was a really cool story because we were actually there was no events and wmu football called us up to cater um prepared meals for the football team every like every week or so for a few months there and then we've worked with churches to doing catering events for churches. And uh, I guess that was a cool story is that it was almost a disaster when we started early on, like early on the beginning of COVID, we were uh, like losing money because all the events were getting canceled. People were wanting deposits on parties back. And uh, we were like $4,000 in the negative at one point in time and an event called that was exactly like $4,500 for an event and it pulled us like right back up. We almost thought about quitting the business at that point, it was getting so hard. And uh, that place called and they, you know, it was an exactly 40, it pulled us out of the negative and we were able to operate and buy food again. And we decided not to give up on it because we were about to go get regular jobs at that point. Can you talk about maybe how you plan on expanding in the future or if there is any plans to? I mean, there, we have all, all, a lot of opportunity because of the knowledge that we have with running a restaurant and um, with running food trucks. So I think there's a potential at some point once we figure, because we're creating systems here systems of how to do things, how to operate the food truck, how to operate the restaurant. And eventually once we have good enough systems, we might be able to expand to more locations or more food trucks. So we have the possibility of doing both. We have like, you know, eight to 10 years background on operating both food trucks and restaurants. Would you ever add more restaurants and eliminate the food trucks or vice versa? It could be a possibility for that. But right now we have the energy to do a lot of events, you know, and there is a lot of things that you have to know about the food trucks, like how to turn gas on, how to start a generator. There's a lot of mechanical side to the food truck that, you know, you have, if, you, if we aren't there ourselves, we're gonna have to actually have like people who are capable of the mechanical side yeah. of operating yeah. that. I like the restaurant and food truck and it's it helps the restaurant out you know we'll slow day or whatever hit a big event with them so if we did another one i would think it would be a good idea to have a restaurant and food truck and our food truck isn't running every day of the week anyways if we run it you know thursday friday saturday usually 
and then um, half the year it's not even running at all. One other side that we've seen is going from small town to bigger town. And that is a, uh, you know, that's been really cool because we were in a town of 2000 people when we bought our first restaurant. It was just 2000 people, very small. We could do the food truck out, we could get the food truck out, but go going from small town to big town, we see the value in that. And we've seen that firsthand. Like there is a value in going to a bigger city because you have more customer, more sales, and you know, even taking the chance at paying for a bigger building building and you know just taking that risk not knowing but coming to a bigger city has paid off well it's paid off big time so i mean that could be another option even go to an even bigger city like grand rapids or count or uh, detroit even you know those yeah. are just ideas that float around in our heads yeah, we, well, we don't know when we'll pull the trigger on anything yet but yeah, no and we we're focused on this place we've had it you know close to two years now and we're getting busier here so it's working out good here, but we always have ideas of doing something bigger. But right now it's just our focus is here and then the new trailer too. And you know, we're, we're doing pretty good here and we're, we're grateful for that because we've seen, you know, restaurants start up and close in eight months. And I worked at a restaurant that failed the whole time it was open. They stayed open for a while, but it was failing the whole time and it sucks. So, you know, we just had to work hard and realize that could be a potential and just do whatever we could to be profitable here. And like I said, it's been working out good for us. So. He was talking about COVID earlier too, and that did suck for our truck stuff because we did mainly food truck stuff back then. And we had a small restaurant that did pretty good business, but it was mainly food truck stuff. So that was the time where it was hard. But on the flip side of that, when our all of our events closed down our restaurant actually boomed because we had a drive-through so we were just booming through through covid you know after for the first like month we were scrambling but once it got going we got pretty good and we didn't really have food truck season that year but the restaurant was busy so if you guys had to recommend a food for both of you to buy what would the customer what should they get we have a el jefe plate that one, it comes with two of our meats and then two of our homemade sides. So you can get our sausage or our ribs or our brisket, pulled pork, pulled chicken. And then all of our sides we make here. Our fries we cook to order so they're not just back there sitting around. So they're always fresh. I really like our smoked chicken nachos or our pulled pork nachos. They're just a different type of nacho. We, we uh, smoked meat on them, top them. They're one of my favorite things, but I know what the customers really like are the burnt end fries. Yeah. Burnt end brisket, cut up, mm -hmm. put on a top of uh, cheese sauce, barbecue sauce, and then top of pico and burnt ends. And that's like a huge fan favorite right now. We, we sell so many of those out of the food truck too. They're like super popular out of the food truck. And the chicken tacos also, people love them. That That's always been one of our main things right there. If you guys could give three tips of advice for other entrepreneurs or anyone out there trying to start something on their own, what would you say? You have to just go for it at some point, you know, and plan for it, but you have to go for it and just whatever happens, happens. Attitude, do you know, it, it's because you're either going to go for it and do well and stay in business for a while, or you're going to go for it and <laughs> you fail. And then just you're back at square one, you know, job and regular life so you just have to have that courage to go for it thing is there's a lot of learning once you do go for it because we've been learning this whole time new stuff and when you fail it's just you learn and i think that just not be not giving up just because the money's running low or this or that those are things that you can overcome and and i think that you just you know it's just like to me it's like just because your money's running low don't give up because that's the time, like you can make it still, you know, that's my advice. Just stick, stay with the course, stick the course. You know, we spend a lot of time on the function, how things work in the kitchen, flow, the engineering of that and how to store stuff too. And that's as important as just making good food because you make good food and it sits around for a while. Well, it's not going to be good you know anymore so just that is very important it's just the function of the kitchen and the front part the counter you know that and that's a lot of stuff that we didn't go to school for it was we started it out and it was slow so we sat back and figured out how to make it go faster and quicker and more efficient it took 
time to do that. But once you figure it out, like that's when you can be really successful in one store and then translate that to another store, another store.